What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kitchen Court Cases, where we watch court in my kitchen. And today we have two child support cases, but it's moms this time instead of dads. Date and time set for front of the court show cause hearing with regard to child support. Ms. Hart, if you'd state your name for the record, please. Jenny A. Hart. Thank you. And Ms. Mullen. Tracy Mullen on behalf of Friend of the Court. Uh, this is the matter of Dewey Hooksma versus Jenny Hart, docket number 2015-007350DS. We're here from an April 26th adjournment to today's date and time to monitor for payments. Parties have a referee recommendation and order signed October 10th, 2022, which orders Ms. Hart to contribute child support and medical support for two children in the amount of $439 per month. Um, the current balance on the account owed is $1,798.36, of which $1,501.86 is owed in child support to Mr. Hooksma. Medical support owed to the state is $254.50, and then there are some fees. There's been prior enforcement on the case, uh, recent payments on the account. <clears throat> we have uh, in a less income withholding payment, October of 2022, $118.89 posted to the account. And then in March of this year, uh, involuntary offset of $2,999 was applied to the case. And then in May of this year, an involuntary offset of $439 was applied to the case. Okay, so we've had some pretty significant payments recently, Ms. Hart. Um, and so your arrears compared to your monthly balance is, is looking pretty good at this point. What, what's been going on? Um, it's just been um, difficult. I, my three-year-old got diagnosed with autism, severely autistic. We're in the process of trying to get SSI for, her, which will help us out tremendously, and I'll be able to continuously make some sort of payment. Um, so right now it's just my husband working because she is in ABA therapy for over 30 hours a week. Sure, and that's an intense therapy. Yes. Um, here's here's what I'm going to do. Um, so in other words, you, you're not currently working, correct? I'm not currently working. I There's just no way with transporting her back and forth and having the therapies that there's much time for me to work i mean i could work third shift but i wouldn't get sleep if that makes sense it it does um so what i'm going to do because we've had some significant payments recently i mean the 2000 paid and, and the 439 i know those are involuntary but they're payments um so um i'm gonna find that right now enforcement i i believe is a manifest hardship um that doesn't erase your arrears ma'am or it doesn't ultimately change your uh, monthly bill but i don't want to have you on the show cause docket like this um, okay when there's obviously a lot going on in your household um so it eventually i guess what i have to say is eventually we'll have to figure out how to get steady payments coming in but for today i'm going to dismiss the contempt just so you're okay. aware that you you might end up back here if um I know that I did talk to social sorry I did talk to social security this like two weeks ago and they're still in the process of getting everything um I filed it already they're in the process of reviewing it and that kind of stuff um and they said that I should know within three months whether or not we get approved okay and that that can be a long road so what I would recommend um if if you i think it would it might help you if you um provide those sort of documents to your caseworker so that you okay. keep us updated on what you, what's going on why why you're you know if there's anything to mitigate the circumstances as to why you're technically violating the court order uh, the court needs to know that okay okay sounds good so do you know who your caseworker is not off the top of my head i do not Ms. Schimpf. Who? I'm sorry. Jessica Schimpf is your caseworker? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now I remember. Okay. So I would write that down and try to get a, you know, you can provide this, these documents to the general friend of the court office. I understand that. But if you're wanting to, it's it could be more helpful if you're keeping in touch with your caseworker 
so that that person knows that you're trying or we're trying to work on something um, okay. in, in lieu of um, having to come see me on show cause day. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. <clears throat> hearing with regard to child support. Uh, Ms. Holmgren, if you'd state your name for the record, please. Nicole Michelle Hyatt. Or Hyatt, thank you. Um, Ms. Mullen. Tracy Mullen on behalf of Friend of the Courts. Uh, this is the matter of David Shaplicki versus Nicole Allman, um, also known as Hyatt, docket number 2010-005635-DM. Uh, parties have a second order modifying judgment of divorce signed October 13th, 2015, which orders uh, Miss Hyatt to contribute child support, health insurance premiums, and medical support for one child in the amount of $224 per month. There's been prior enforcement on the case. This is an adjournment from April 26th to today's date and time. Balance on the account currently owed is $3,446.77 of which $3,241.77 is owed to Mr. Shaplicki in child support and medical support. And then there are some fees and costs. Payments on the account uh, in the past year. In October, uh, Ms. Uh, Hyatt paid current plus arrears. In November, $136.78 was paid. December, $136.78. And then in current, uh, current plus arrearages were paid by uh, Ms. Hyatt in January and February of this year. Uh, they also included a offset of $367. She paid, uh, I'm sorry, and then in March of this year, $853 applied to the case as an involuntary offset. And then she made a payment in March, which was the last for $27.21. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hyatt, so what's been going on? I had a spinal surgery done 15 months ago. And I've been having some complications. I ended up did getting a job for seven months at the bowling alley, but I ended up injuring myself. So I'm not able to work at the moment due to my spinal injury that I have. Do you have, um, well, obviously I'm sorry to hear that, but do you have any medical documents you can provide to your caseworker where we could verify? I, it, I have. It's not that we don't. So just so I, could say it's not that I don't believe you, but it's helpful to have some you, corroborating documents from a doctor or something so that we can put it in your file and not have you show up on show cause day. Your, your honor, I've done that twice already. I've had ascended medical from my doctor and my surgeon both. Okay. Do you know when you did that? Ms. Mullen can look for me. Here. It was sometime last year. Oh, I'm I, not here. But that wouldn't have been, but that would have been before this most recent injury correct i've been dealing with this injury since the beginning of covid for the last couple of years understood so here's what i'm saying you had surgery then you were able to work and then you were injured we don't have anything around the injury okay you see what i'm saying so yes. in other words at some point i understand you couldn't work and then you could and now you can't so I'm looking for some information that says that you cannot work currently. Okay, I can get that for you. And you have that information? I don't, but I can talk to my doctor and get some some of that because we're we're still going through all the process. Like I'm still going through it. I do more doctor's appointments, and it's been a very big hassle. Sure. Any any of any of that um, information that you can that you have and can provide to your caseworker could help because. If we had that information, I could make a finding that you can't pay, but I'd just like to see that information first. So what I'm going to do is okay. just adjourn this out 60 days. So to give you opportunity and give you an opportunity to provide that information. If we come back in 60 days and we haven't heard anything from you, there's not much I can say. Okay. Of course. All right. So, um, and I, do you know who your caseworker is? It, you, I know her by Julie Conway. Uh, Dubay is, is her current last name, okay. but yes, yeah, so same, okay. same case manager. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so if you can reach out to her, um, as I've said, you, you can, um, well, see on the other case, but you can provide this information to our general office if you want, but if you want to have a direct 
contact with your caseworker or someone who's you know hands on with your case um it may be best to get that information to her okay okay so hoping to see that that will be in the order that you provide your medical information and like i said it's really going to be more relevant to the current sort of re-injury or, or the newer okay so yep. 15 months ago that part's not necessarily going to be something that we need for the, the hearing in 60 days oh yeah perfect Okay. I can get that thank, for you. Thank you, ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I thought that was interesting. We don't see cases with women as often in child support court, so I'm not sure why he adjourned both of them. Although the first one he seemed a little more understanding about. Anyways, I really enjoy Matthew Hagen as usual. I am so glad that uh, we get to watch his stuff. And I'm really glad that you are watching court with me. If you like the video, please go ahead and click that button. Don't be a dick. <laughs> I hope you have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.